The other thing that's going to happen, I think, I think gasoline is going to be a big thing. Everyone knows what the price of gasoline is. And I bought, I filled up my car last night. It was $4.20, okay? I unfortunately have a nice car, so it's premium gas. But the point is, when we start seeing five and six dollar gas, when we start seeing five and six dollar gas prints, you're gonna you're gonna hear some people howl, and that's coming because oil's at eighty two right now, and it's marching. The oil chart looks fabulous; it's just marching relentlessly higher. So my opinion is, you know, inflation is gonna cook these guys, and I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. I mean, I don't know why Jay Powell wanted to be reappointed. I mean, he has to be one of the dumbest men in the world. I mean, if I were in that job, I'd have gotten out of there so damn fast, your head would have spun. I said, thank you very much. You know, go. I'll, I'll hit the lecture circuit. I'll write a book. I'll call myself a hero. I mean, thank you. know, Bernanke, I mean, all those guys. I mean, when you're in that seat, you know, he's going he's gonna to be the guy, I think, who takes the blame when this whole thing comes undone. Now, the interesting thing with everything Larry said, uh, I think to a man, a person on this podcast, so... None of us want this to happen, though, right, gentlemen? We do not want oh, the horrible. system to unravel. No. You, you cannot no. possibly want that. So there is a solution. Yes. And we've talked about what that solution is. That solution is a Bitcoin standard or a parallel network that operates as your savings account. And the fiat currency is your checking account. Right. And you use the fiat currency for things like international trade and avoiding barter. But you don't store your value in your checking account. You store your value in your savings account. If the United States adopts the Bitcoin standard, which I think they should do, and I think they will do, then you can ensure that this network transfer rescues this horrible outcome. Okay, And you can continue having a fiat global reserve currency And the global reserve asset will be Bitcoin, not U.S. Treasuries anymore, but Bitcoin. I completely agree. Isn't there a risk, though, Greg, that if if the equity markets drop, that Bitcoin still correlates with the equity markets and the Bitcoin itself could drop? You don't think so? No question it could drop, but here's the reality. And I've tried to explain this. And, you know, the best thing I can describe Bitcoin as, as it is credit protection, on a basket of sovereigns. Lawrence brought that up. Um, If you think of what credit protection is, it is a short credit position, meaning you are long volatility. Right now, Bitcoin trades as a short volatility asset. It trades in line with equities. Equities are a short volatility asset. But people haven't done their homework to understand what the beauty is of this instrument. It's only 13 years old. Most people don't understand what credit protection is to begin with, let alone what a long volatility asset is. But the smart guys out there, the Ray Dalios of the world, I promise you understand what a long volatility asset is. So it's a it's a question of education. More importantly, it's a question of the big money understanding this most beautiful instrument which will hedge all their other short volatility positions. In reality, you should own Bitcoin against the price of equities falling, but everyone trades them. Now, here's an interesting thing, and Lawrence might opine on this. Open interest in Bitcoin futures just reached all-time highs. Okay, are there equity players out there that are short Bitcoin to hedge their long equity positions. I guarantee you they are. Oh, absolutely. And that's what's called hedged and wedged, okay? You are in an inverted trade and you're going to get your face ripped off (laughs) when the world (laughs) understands that Bitcoin is actually insurance. And everyone who's short insurance now needs to not only cover their short, but actually go out there and buy insurance as well. It'll create what I called in a Bitcoin magazine article that I wrote with Seb Bunny, the gamma squeeze on the Fed put. Bitcoin is a put on the Fed put. It's the most beautiful option instrument ever designed. It has no theta, which means no time expiry. It is actually a long volatility asset. And the gamma squeeze on the Fed put means the Fed central bank is also going to have to be a buyer of Bitcoin. Yeah. 
It will be a face ripping rally yeah. that will make your eyes bleed. Yeah, and, and it's anyone, coming as open interest. Yeah, anyone who's short Bitcoin is is going to get wrecked. I mean, they're just going to get absolutely, totally, and utterly wrecked. I mean, imagine a situation where Bitcoin goes to a million dollars a coin in the space of you know three or four months. I mean, you know, if I mean, it, people will just people will get destroyed. I mean, Caitlin thinks a, a G sib will go down as a result of it because. People who are on the short side of the Bitcoin trade don't understand what they're doing. And if they're if they're putting on the trade, oh, okay. turn this off. If, if they're putting on the trade that Greg just talked about, they're insane. They're absolutely insane because there's a limited supply of this stuff, and it could go discontinuous up, and almost to the point where there's no offer. And um, you know, it, it it will probably croak the financial system at some point. And so to be short it is, is, I mean, I can't imagine anything more stupid. We all might have other problems. I mean, the, the sad, sad thing, and nobody wishes for the system to blow up. None of us created the system and none of us, you know, um, voted for the system, but the system is what it is. And I think it's important to understand that the Bitcoin network is just a mathematical network that doesn't give a shit. And there's no, there, there is no higher authority that can bail it out. And if there's more demand than supply, the price is going to reflect that. And if, you know, if people have written derivatives around it and anyone who's short it, they're, they're going to get wrecked, period. Here's the cool thing. It's not about Bitcoin versus gold. Let's, first of all, gold is still arguably $10 trillion. It's pretty small in the, in the global pie of financial assets, which is $900 trillion U.S. dollars, okay? Debt of that 900 trillion, debt is 400 trillion. Get me 10% of the debt market going into Bitcoin. 10% of the debt market is $40 trillion. 40 trillion divided by 21 million. Oh my goodness, there's your $2 million price target of Bitcoin. Right. Don't have to argue with the gold bugs. We don't have to argue with the equity guys. The debt guys are the idiots in the room, okay? If you are lending money, you are a clown, okay? You failed mathematics. <laughs> Understand that Bitcoin is your appropriate uh, new asset class. If you're gonna allocate to uh, Bitcoin, you have zero Bitcoin, you need to get some, take it out of your bond po uh, portfolio, take it out of your bond basket and move it into Bitcoin. Get off zero, right, Peter? There's too many people in the world that still have zero yeah, allocation zero. to Bitcoin, and that is too dangerous. You know, it's it's not all apocalyptic. This will get it. This thing will get sorted out. It really will. I mean, unfortunately, there will be some people who are naive will get hurt, but um, you know, a lot of a lot of people won't. And um, the, the issues here will get sorted out. We will return to sound money, and I, I, I can see. You know, I'm very much you know, in the Jeff Booth school of the world being a really great place when we get to the other side of this transition. It's just going to be bumpy. That's all. It's going to be really bumpy. But people get a couple of chances at it. You know, I mean, look, there were people at 69 thinking, hey, this shit's getting away from me. Now they got a chance. They had a chance recently to buy it at 41. You know, and, and this, is the, this is the case for dollar cost averaging. You know, just, just save in Bitcoin terms. In 10 years, you'll be really glad you did.